Aria, Left Luggage by Jeff Nelder. A mysterious suitcase found in space was opened at a U.S. airbase. A virus is released, presumed alien, that inflicts a hitherto unknown medical condition in humans. Infectious amnesia. There is no immunity, and sufferers lose memory backwards at the rate of a year's worth per week. Imagine the ramifications. In just a month, you've lost four years. Where you live, your job, infrastructure breaks down. A few people realize what's going on and isolate themselves. Excerpt from Chapter 22. Monday, May 4, 2015, Moraine Lake. 18 days since Aria, alien retrograde infectious amnesia, started. Most people have lost up to two years and four weeks of memory. Manuel struggled through to consciousness. A new alarm clock hammered away, making him throw an unseeing arm at where his bedside cabinet should have been. One eye opened and found a pinewood ceiling. He could smell coffee, but the unfamiliar log cabin tugged at his worry bone. He remembered going to bed in his own room. Pale green walls, white ceiling, cobwebs. He admired the dawn light hitting the carpet. Pine trees with a busy resident woodpecker met his eyes. The alarm clock had feathers. He scratched an armpit. So, I'm definitely not in Baltimore. After finding the bathroom, his nose detected toast along with the coffee. He ventured into the kitchen. Oh, you're up, said a scowling young woman sitting at a rustic table. Manuel searched his shot memory, but failed to locate a white-faced girl with long jet black hair among his acquaintances. Before you throw a wobbler, read that. She pointed at a note column on the table. A milky coffee, just as he liked it, waited for him. He looked up again, yellow t-shirt and jeans. He looked at his own clothes, black trousers, white shirt, and a NASA tie. Good God, he dressed for work. You are Manuel Gomez, employed by NASA as their education officer. Except you are on leave, along with most of the population, because you have ARIA an infectious amnesia throwing out your memories at the rate of 50 days worth each day. This started for you on 15th April 2015. It is now Monday, 4th May 2015, so you have lost 950 days or two years, seven months, and two days of memory. You have remarried to Jet, who also has Aria and is sitting at the table with you. She's diabetic, but cut down her humulin dose. See notes. You're Jet, my wife. I am, Jet, but I have no recollection of marrying you. Don't get any ideas. Hang on. My head is spinning, coping with waking up with a disease in Canada instead of my home in Baltimore. Look at us, Jet. I'm, I'm mid-50s. You're, you're what? 18? 20? That's not the big deal. No. What is? Look at you. You obviously don't look after yourself. You've deserted your other wife because of this amnesia, and how do I know you don't have any STDs? Manuel, glad he received the broadside while sitting down, shook his head. Jet, as far as I know, I have no diseases except one that's robbed me of what must have been a hell of a courtship and a cracking wedding night. My wife left me for an insurance salesman, and though I grant you I'm hiding a six-pack stomach under a keg, I have more muscles than I used to. He did a strong man impression. She turned to face the window so he couldn't see her smiling. There's a load of chopped wood out back, so I guess you might have been working out, Jack said. He saw her reflection, fighting a grin. Manuel looked at the rough calluses on his palms. Yep, yeah, that's right. Extraordinary for a desk man. Jack examined her own hands, showing Manuel her wedding ring. Who brought us here, and why? Well, I guess we did. I have memories of being up here in Marine Lake as a kid. I have nothing here. A shoulder bag with some clothes, an ID. There's my insulin in the fridge. Enough for a month, I reckon. But I need to go find some more. You saw the note about not going into town, he said, looking worried. Sure I did. Lawless gangs. In Lake Louise and probably my home city, Vancouver. But where am I going to get my insulin? I don't know, Jat. I guess we'll be risking some forays out there to hospitals and city drugstores, but I have a feeling they'll be trashed pretty soon, if not already. I'm surprised more insulin isn't here. Which tells us it was a spur of the moment decision, yeah? Like our marriage, you mean? Whatever. Maybe it was for my protection. As if I needed it. Or mine. Don't look surprised. 
Two are better than one in a crisis, even if one is a girl. He had to duck to avoid the plate projectile. They both sat facing each other across the rustic long table to savor toast and maple syrup along with the strong coffee for breakfast. This syrup would have been better on pancakes, she said. Guess so. Found any? I haven't gone through that huge freezer yet. Can you freeze pancakes? Don't you know anything about cooking? I suppose that's another reason you chained me to you. Hey, I'll have you know I was the legend of culinary achievement in my place of work. Which was a den in your house? Sometimes. He joined in the laughter. But mostly at NASA's Washington Media Center. They finished their breakfast, alternating between sitting and walking around the cabin. Outside, on a trestle, lay wood begging to be chopped. Without a second thought, Manuel levered the axe out of an old stump, and after spitting on his hands, making Jack recoil with a screwed up face, he swung the axe, neatly starting a V incision. Well, you clearly have your future mapped out, she said. More therapy than the need for firewood already. I've no doubt you're right. Sure feels good to use muscle in the cause of survival. You could always stack up the pieces against the cabin where I've started. I could always not. Whatever. He could tell that he had an uphill struggle with Jat, and yet there must have been some endearing quality for them to decide to stay together. He went on a course of reverse psychological motivation still in his memory. Leaning the axe against the door jam, he followed her back into the kitchen. He sniffed again at his coffee. This brew, interesting flavor. Spit it out if you don't like it. She'd folded her arms so tight he could see her fingers whitening. I'd rather not, thank you. It's just that it's rare to find someone who can burn coffee. He sat, ready to duck again, but she just stood with her back to the window, arms still folded, giving him the evil eye. After a few seconds, he winked at her. She turned to the window again. I'm going to leave and get to my folks in Vancouver, she said, maintaining her stare out the window, watching a red-headed woodpecker annoy beetles. Manuel drummed fingers on the pine table. He wondered why she voiced her desire to go home right now. He was sure after the warnings on the note comm, she wouldn't want to risk traveling. Jet, maybe we could buy some insulin on the web. DHL could fly it in. My God, I've married a comedian. It's not just about insulin. I could probably live a while without it if I'm careful. But Vancouver's my home. I want to know what's happening. I'm not sure it helps to know too much at the moment, Manuel said, but regretted letting his pessimism out to play. Yeah, cheers. You have no family, do you, Gomez? Only run around here, Mrs. Gomez. They gave each other wry smiles. And a bunch more in Spain. I'm pretty sure you're not going to like me when I go stir-crazy in this wooden box. She slammed down the jar of instant coffee she just picked up. Yeah, well, shall we go for a stroll and take in our estate? Are we tooled up? Oh, I hadn't thought about it. Are we expecting to attack us? I don't know. Maybe I have an ex out there objecting to me having a geriatric for a husband. More likely one of my friends trying to protect me from a gold digging floozy. Touche. But have we a submachine gun? I have no idea. It would be a good idea. I was thinking in order to get my insulin by force if I have to. Would you kill someone in order to get some, even if you've none left? Jat let out an exasperated sigh. I should have two doses of insulin a day now. If it looks like I'm about to kiss you, Manuel, it's to let you close enough to smell my breath. If you smell pear drops and I'm irritable, all right, more irritable than usual, and if I'm eating all your stores, drinking all the water, peeing all the time while being out of breath, then I'm probably about to go into a coma, and within a few days I'll need to find the shovel. Point taken. But I might have a plan. So have I. Get home. Manuel had a turn at exhaling a long sigh. Why do you think there's no answer when you ring your home in Vancouver or the mobile phones of your folks and friends there? You've had the breakfast TV on. No news since I've been in here, just repeats, probably on a loop. Not much to go on, is it? Repeats on TV and phones going wrong is hardly news these days. And what are these days? Because we don't remember them, do we? And that is news, Jat. Too many coincidences. Let's call the police in Vancouver. Hell, anywhere. Call 911. Though reluctant to prove him right, Jack tapped 911. Nothing. Not even the usual hold message. 
All the more reason to find out what's happened. She wiped a tear. Manuel gave her a tea cloth. Normally I'd agree, but what's the most probable outcome? We're told we have a vehicle down the lane. We need to drive 300 miles, which means finding a gas station to get all the way there and to get back. All right, don't look at me as if that's not an option. Maybe we'd run into trouble on the way, let alone when we reach the outskirts of center of Vancouver, a city full of bewildered and hungry people. I'm painting an ugly picture, I know, but I'm sorry, that's how I see it. All the more reason to find my folks and get them out of there. He stood and wandered to the window. The woodpecker had rested its beak, but a spring shower threw raindrops against the glass, so percussion prevailed. I understand that, Jap. Suppose we find them. How many are we talking? Half dozen? More? We'd need more vehicles and maybe get followed back here. My bet is that we wouldn't find them. They might have found their own refuge in the valleys, lost their phones, or couldn't keep recharging them. They'd be upset at the thought of you being in danger looking for them when they're safe or dead. We can't keep on like this. How about email? They might have left you a message. Now you're talking. Hey, Manuel, do you think we'll have this debate tomorrow? Probably had it yesterday. He switched on the computer after reading the instructions on powering up the satellite receiver and checking the battery, whose solar recharging had just taken a dive with the rainy weather. I knew a Brit, Ryder. He might have information for us. He heard a thud at the back door, which sent both into crouch mode to hide beneath window height. Jat, on her way from the kitchen, grabbed the steak knife while Manuel shuffled around to his bedroom to collect a baseball bat he'd noticed under the bed. Maybe it was just the wind throwing some firewood at us, whispered Manuel. Either way, we'll nip out the front door. You get behind a big tree while I sneak around the back. No fucking way. Stop treating me like a little girl. You're so patronizing. I've probably been in more scrapes than you have. All right, stop going on about me trying to protect my wife. We'll do a pincer movement, if that's okay with you. She set off before he finished locking the door. He'd already checked the bolt on the back door. Damn the woman. He could hear her running around, just so she could get another score on him, as if all of this was just a game. He had more trouble. Holly grew right up to the side of the cabin, forcing a time-consuming detour. His right foot disappeared mid-calf in a cold, muddy, leaf-hidden puddle, making him bite his lip to stop swaying out loud. He heard a cry, accelerating his movement. He rounded the last corner to find Jat on her knees with her back to him. Still a gentle rain falling. She must have wet knees at least. Maybe a hole in her chest. Manuel stayed crouched and looked around while moving in on Jat. Isn't he gorgeous? She said, turning to show him the scraggiest mongrel he'd ever seen. Is that our intruder? Say hello to Disco. Don't you think that's appropriate for a discovery? I don't think you should be so close to it. Probably got rabies. Looks ill. And judging by its mangy coat, it's a wolf cross. He's just starving and cold. Come on, Disco. You're not bringing him in the cabin. Disco is wet, too. Anyway, he might be our lost mutt. Poor thing, having owners who forget about him every day. There's no mention of a dog in the note column. There isn't time to read everything. Better make a highlighted note about Disco so we know for sure tomorrow. Manuel followed them into the kitchen where Jet wrapped a towel around the animal. He said, I suppose he could be a guard dog. There, Disco. Manuel is a nice man. Forget what I told you earlier. Nevertheless, I don't want him in the cabin. Once you've dried him and, no doubt, given him a better breakfast than I had, he can stay on the sheltered porch out front. I'm going to have a look around, try and familiarize. Find the vehicle. Check how much fuel it has. Hey, are you listening? What? Oh, go then. Make sure our mobile phones have both numbers in and take yours with you. Into his shoulder bag, he placed his note comm, mobile phone, food, and water. It wasn't that he didn't expect to be back, but he had to be prepared for anything. One thing was certain. If and when he returned to the cabin, a perishing dog will be on his bed.